Hello and welcome to this short webinar on PLL design with MATLAB and Simulink. This short webinar is part of a series of webinars on mixed signal design. Other webinars in this series will include ADC, SIRDES, top-down design and verification. All of the examples used in this webinar will be available to you for download at the end of the webinar. Why should we use MATLAB and Simulink for PLL design? The simple answer is speed. That's speed of analysis, speed of simulation, and speed of design. Using MATLAB and Simulink, designers are cutting down design time substantially, as we'll see. MATLAB enables us to very quickly perform stability analysis for PLLs. We can quickly find loop parameters that meet our frequency and stability requirements. Simulink's long heritage as a controls design tool means it has a long history of optimization for control loop design, something that makes it ideally suited for phase lock loop design. As we'll see, Simulink can simulate PLLs in a fraction of the time it would take to do the same simulation in SPICE. Simulink models can be changed extremely quickly, so this fact coupled with the speed of simulation means we can investigate different design architectures very quickly. Now, this need for speed comes from enhanced competition in the mixed signal industry. As you know, competition has increased over the last several years. Time to market, therefore, has become increasingly important. Of course, our MATLAB and Simulink models must somehow be tied in with the rest of the design process. We still need to do SPICE and HDL simulations. We'll show how this can happen with a demonstration of the link between Simulink and Cadence Virtuoso. One of the first questions a designer will ask is, what should our PLL architecture be? There are a number of different architectural choices we can make, along with choices for values of components, e.g. capacitance values, etc. We also want our PLL to be stable, and we need to be able to investigate how parameter changes affect stability. This is an area where MATLAB can help automate the design process. Obviously, MATLAB has visualization and data analysis capabilities, but the trick is to combine them in a script or an application that makes the process easier and faster. Ideally, we want to make the process interactive and visual. Here's a script to show what can be done. The first part of the script sets up some known PLL constraints and initial system properties. Then we get into system analysis. Finally, the script graphically shows the contribution of various noise sources. Let's run the script. At the start of the script, we set up some system parameters. And we display a graph of noise. Next, we call the SISO tool. The SISO tool lets us examine system stability in a very interactive way. We can look at architectures to investigate their properties. Here we've chosen this architecture to investigate, but we could have chosen others. The tool lets us examine the Bode plots here. In this case, the Bode plots are interactive, allowing us to change the location of the poles and zeros and look at the effect on the system. We can look at other system properties too. For example, we can look at how the step response changes to changes in the pole and zero location. We can also look at other system properties too. For example, we can look at impulse response, Nyquist, etc., etc. When we're happy with our system, we can export the system parameters to the MATLAB workspace. The final stage in this script is plotting the phase noise graph. This example has been driven from a script, but we could equally have created a GUI-based application to do the same thing. In fact, some of our customers have done that. At the end of this kind of analysis, we've quickly and interactively worked out our architecture and some initial values. But how might a system like this actually perform? What happens when we simulate our PLL? 
We'll start our simulation off in the phase domain and show a simple PLL model in Simulink. The input to this model is a signal representing changes to the phase. We want to understand how this design reacts to phase changes. This model has a voltage controlled oscillator, a loop compensator, a phase de and phase detector. These are all modelled at the behavioural level. The model also includes a circuit level subsystem. Simulink has the ability to include high level models of circuit components like resistors, capacitors, op amps, etc. And let's have a look at this compensator. As you can see, it's implemented using these circuit elements. In this model, we're comparing the results of our behavioural loop compensator with the circuit loop compensator. We're looking at the differences between the outputs, which we hope will be zero. In this model, a number of the Simulink model parameters are set using a MATLAB script, which is called when the model is run. In fact, we're reusing some parts of the script from our previous example. Let's run the model. Here is the VCO output. The bottom graph here is the difference between the behavioural and the circuit models. And at this level of resolution, the difference is zero. So very quickly, we can investigate phase domain behavior. The advantage of this approach is speed of execution. We can get our answers back extremely quickly. But designing a system in the phase domain isn't enough. There are some behaviors that only manifest themselves in the time domain. Let's turn to an example that shows this kind of behavior. This model is a representation of a simple PLL. It's using circuit elements to model resistance, capacitance, etc. Now, I'm not going to talk through all the elements of the model, but I will point out, of course, that it does use feedback. Well, let's run the model. The scope shows the output of the phase detector, and the spectrum shows the spectrum. Notice how clean the spectrum is with very little power in the subbands. Now, we're going to add in a very small amount of delay. So as we can see, one of the flip-flops has a delay asymmetry block here to add in that delay. So we can see it's a very small amount of delay. This kind of delay might be seen in a real system, and the process that we're following here is typical of the processes of adding impairments and imperfections to simulate models to better model reality. So let's add that impairment and turn it on. The small asymmetry introduces a small amount of chaotic behavior noise into the system. We can see the sidebands have increased substantially. This is unwanted behavior. But to get rid of the unwanted periodic element of the VCO output, we've added in a filter here. Let's turn on the switch and see the effect of adding the filter. We can see two things. Firstly, the VCO output on the scope is a lot cleaner. The filter has substantially reduced noise. Secondly, the spectrum is a lot flatter too. It substantially reduced the amount of power in the sidebands, although there's obviously still some noise there. Despite the simple name, this model has a number of more complex features. But even with this complexity, we were able to very quickly add in an impairment, look at its effect on system behavior, and try a solution, in this case the filter. Imagine how long this would have taken if we'd done this with SPICE modeling. Let's turn now to a more complex PLL model. Fractional N PLLs have improved frequency resolution at the expense of increased circuit complexity and phase noise. This model is a basic implementation of the fractional N design ideas. The blocks in this model are mostly subsystems, meaning they contain other blocks, as we can see here. Despite being a basic implementation of a fractional N PLL, the model contains a large number of blocks. Let's run the model. As we can see, the spectrum as measured at the output of the VCO is very clean. The time scope shows that the VCO is locked onto the input signal. And this is the behavior that we want. Now, let's go back and look at the model and look at the phase compensation here. Let's turn off the phase compensation. As you can see, the VCO has lost its lock and the sidebands have grown substantially. 
we'll look in more detail at the face detector. The original signal and the feedback signal are fed into the phase frequency detector, and the phase compensation is added at this point. The signal is then filtered. By flipping the switch, we turn off phase compensation so the system no longer has the behavior that we want. Let's go back up and turn on the phase compensation. We can see the VCO output locks and the sidebands have been removed. As an aside here, this model also calculates peak-to-peak -peak jitter and produces an estimate of the input frequency. So again, we're able to take an architecture, quickly investigate it, and understand whether it meets our requirements or not. At some point, we have a design that we think will work according to our design criteria, but our design is a behavioral model. How can we link our behavioral model to a spice level circuit simulation? There are several ways of linking MATLAB and Simulink to circuit simulators. One method involves code generation from MATLAB and Simulink and including this code into the SPICE or Verilog simulator. The generated code can be C or HDL and we support both VHDL and Verilog code generation. In fact, this is the methodology developed by Stark for Japanese mixed signal semiconductor companies. Although this method has been used very successfully, today we're going to focus on another approach, which is co-simulation. Co-simulation involves two different tools from two different vendors running at the same time. This is our baseline Simulink model that we're going to use today. It's a simple uh, PLL model with a charge pump. Note how quickly it runs. What we're going to do is use this as the base of our model. We're going to replace the charge pump in that Simulink model with a charge pump running in Cadence Virtuoso, in fact, in their Spectre tool. Here's the charge pump in Spectre. What we're going to do is put in a connector block which will link this charge pump inspector to our PLL model in Simulink. We're going to connect up the connector, we're going to specify the number of input output ports, we're going to specify some details of the connection, we're going to paste it into this model and connect it up. And here we go. On the flip side now, we're going to go back up to Simulink. We're going to replace the charge pump in Simulink with a call down to Spectre to run the charge pump in Spectre. So we put in our connector block, we configure it correctly, input output ports, etc., etc., paste it into our model, connect it up, and this is the connection between Simulink and Spectre. Now let's run the model. What happens is that Spectre is started in the background, as we can see here. It calls up the charge pump model, and at simulation time, we have an exchange of data at every simulation time step between the Simulink PLL model and the charge pump inspector. The graph on the bottom left-hand side is the time scope running in Simulink. The thing that I want you to note is the slow speed of execution. This is being determined by the SPI simulator. SPICE is very accurate, but it's very slow. The penalty is a slow simulation time. So we'll cut away from this simulation in a minute and come back to it when the simulation has progressed a bit further. OK, we're back at the simulation now. A little bit more time has elapsed. You can see that the scope's being built up and again note the slow speed of simulation. What we'll do is we'll stay with this piece of the simulation for a, a few seconds and then cut away towards the end of the simulation. We have to do this for time's sake for this very short webinar. And here we're rejoining the simulation at the end of the simulation. So here we can see the time-based scope, we can see the spectrum, and we can compare that with the results of our behavioral modeling that we did earlier. We can look to see where we maybe need to improve our behavioral modeling, etc., etc. So we can use behavioral modeling in Simulink as a test harness for a SPICE model, or even vice versa. This approach has been used very successfully by a number of companies, and we have a number of case studies that describe what they did. So we can therefore go from 
behavioral modeling, top-down modeling, to circuit modeling in another tool, for example, Cadence Spectre. So let's turn now to some case studies. This approach is currently used by PLL designers worldwide. Today, we're just going to look at two examples. We're going to look at IDT New Wave and Epoch Microelectronics. IDT New Wave are designing PLLs for the telecommunications market. They're using Simulink to design their PLLs, testing for jitter response. They found the simulation times were substantially reduced to just one month overall. Individual simulations that used to take days were now done in 30 minutes. They found this approach, this top-down design approach, increased collaboration between their circuit and system designers because Simulink provided a common language to investigate the different design approaches. They also found they could find errors much more quickly using this kind of very rapid simulation. And they found this speeded up the verification process substantially, in fact by a factor of five for them. Overall, they increased their design efficiency by a factor of three. And this case study is available on the web. The other case study we're going to look at today is Epoch Microelectronics, who are doing something quite different. As we've seen in the demonstrations that we've done today, PLLs typically contain both analog and digital components. An all-digital PLL, as the name suggests, contains wholly digital components. Now, for certain types of design, this approach has a great deal of advantages. However, there are some severe problems. The timescales inherently involved in PLL design can be a challenge, and they vary from a microsecond simulation for phase lock to femtosecond-based simulations for phase noise evaluation. S the simulation engine used to simulate all digital PLLs must include both sets of times. Because of the way in which Simulink handles time, even these hugely different timescales can be simulated very quickly. In this case study, Epoch Microelectronics talk in some detail about how you can model an all-digital PLL in Simulink. And again, this case study is available from the web. Most of the examples I've shown you today are available for free as part of our mixed signal library. This library is a collection of blocks and demos and tutorials for mixed signal designers. It includes demos and blocks for ADC design, PLL design, SIRDES design, switch mode power supply, digital pre-distortion, and a couple of other areas too as well. There are over 40 blocks, more than 50 demos, there are tutorials, and there's full help for everything. Now, if you would like this free demo, here's how you can get it. You can go to this URL here and go and download it, or you could go Google the phrase mixed signal library. If you follow that link, you come to this web page where you can download the library. You put in some registration information and you can download the library. If you can't remember the URL, go to Google and type in mixed signal library. The first hit will be to our free mixed signal library and you can get to the library and download it from there. This webinar is part of a series of mixed signal webinars, including webinars on ADC design, SIRDES design, top-down design, and verification. Here's a summary where we got to today. The point of using a flow like this is speed. That's speed of analysis, speed of simulation, and speed of overall design and verification. This need for speed has come from the enhanced competition that we've seen in the marketplace over the last few years time to market is becoming much more important. Using this kind of design flow, designers are able to very rapidly look through different design alternatives and choose the best design. And we've also seen how designers can take this behavioral modeling, this top-down modeling, and link it in to circuit level simulation. If you're a mixed signal designer, I wish you the best of luck and thank you very much for spending your time with me. Bye-bye.